Howdy Artie friends! So today I am going to do a few figure drawing demos. Since I have a Skype workshop coming up, I thought it would be a great way to kind of prepare for that. So I'm going to be doing my demos on Strathmore 300 series drawing paper, this nice large pad, so I can show the kids tomorrow um, sort of a finished version. And I'm going to be doing my sketching just using Crayola Super Tip markers. So one of the first things I want to show you guys is I'm going to demonstrate the basic skeletal form. This is kind of a riff on the uh, stick figure, so it should look very familiar to everybody. It's not very complicated. We start with the spine, shoulders. I usually block it in with sort of a triangular shape. Sticks for the arms. And sticks for the legs. An egg for the rib cage. And the head. So we have here just sort of a very basic skeletal form. Now, usually, real humans are five to six heads. So this would be a head, five to six heads tall. But when we're drawing for comics, when we're drawing for cartooning, that sort of thing, unless it's a very stylized style, they're typically drawn seven heads tall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this guy is actually too tall. And the human shoulders are usually like one, sometimes three heads wide, sometimes um, two with a half head on either side of the head for the shoulders. It just depends on how broad shouldered the character you're drawing is. And the waist should usually be, like this is where the pelvis should be hitting. So that would be the front view. And for those of you who are looking for more information on how to do this, I highly recommend you check out Andrew Loomis's book, Figure Drawing for All It's Worth. That's where the basic skeletal form sort of really comes into play, kind of hits its own. Burn Hogarth also has a really good book on um, constructive human anatomy that approaches it as a series of building blocks. So this would be our side view. And then the back and the front view in this skeletal drawing method are very similar. So we have seven head heights sketched out. Two, three, 
four, so halfway through. And I'm just drawing marks to help me remember all of my landmarks. So we've got our head. Our torso, our pelvis, which is a little bit like the axle on a truck, our thighs, our calves, and then our legs, and an egg for the ribcage. This guy is a little too thin. So when I redraw him to demonstrate how we can flesh this out, um, I'm gonna bulk him up a little bit. So again, this is the basic skeletal form. This is really easy. I really recommend you guys practice this form in different poses. Use Croquis Cafe or use Pixel Lovely or any or Senshi Shop Stock would be an excellent resource. And if you guys are interested, I can do a demonstration later on where I draw poses from Senshi Stock in this, um, in the skeletal form. So I'm gonna do another one of the skeletal form. And I'll bulk him out like I promised. And for every drawing I do, I do this basic stick figure. Here is the bow of um, the collarbone. The axle of his pelvis. And if you look at pictures of skeletons, you can definitely see where this sort of breakdown comes from, as well as the shapes we give the bones. And I find it's helpful to draw the femurs with a little bit of curve because that adds a little bit more life early on into this, this stage of sketch. We have a tendency to take the life and the gesture out of drawings as we tighten them up rather than adding life and gesture. So. It's good to have it in earlier. All right, so that is our basic skeletal view. Now I'm gonna show you sort of the constructive part of constructive human anatomy. And it really just revolves around knowing some basic shapes. So the head is a sphere. And that's the profile view of the sphere. And that is the back of the head view of the head. So we've got a sphere, we have sort of an oblong egg shape, we have, a lot of people will draw this as a box, some people say to think of it as like a bucket because it tilts forward. To hold your guts, basically. And then we have a lot of cylinders. And what's nice about constructive human anatomy is you start out with something really simple and you develop it as you need it. Not every drawing is going to need you to develop every aspect of the figure. It's also a really 
great starting point for learning how to draw the human body and just kind of better understanding how the human body is put together and how it moves. So you're constructing your figure every time you draw him or her, rather than trying to remember human anatomy, you're basically just working from very simple, easy to reproduce building, bo building blocks. So for those of you who are a little more analytical or always loved Legos, constructive human anatomy can be a great method of learning how to draw people. And then the feet are, you can start by sketching them in as triangles, but really they are wedges. All right, so we have a basic kind of unfleshed out drawing of a male body. We're going to go over how to do the same with a female body. A lot of the basics, the skeletal drawing view are the same. Um, what changes is really the proportions and where the body's curves are. So I'm going to do seven heads tall again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two, three, four, midway. So we're still gonna start with kind of a rectangular shape. Actually, we're gonna start by drawing in her spine or her line of action. And for me, when I'm drawing female figures or adult female figures, I usually will take it in at the waist, depending on my drawing needs, of course. But we still have the egg shape. Alright, so that is our very basic female skeleton. Now I'm going to do a more fleshed out view. But so far, not different or not that different from the male skeleton we just did. And I need to draw my line of action. And often for poses, I will look up reference to draw from that. So these are just kind of very basic, unfleshed out. Sketches, they're not, you know, if I were to do a pose figure, I'd have to, or I would prefer to do some reference and not be hunched over on the floor.
and my approach to drawing human anatomy is a combination of Andrew Loomis's stuff of Glenn Vilpu's drawing method which I highly recommend there he does have a YouTube channel also so you guys can get kind of a taste for his work but it's a phenomenal resource that I think every artist and every cartoonist should be aware of and he teaches you how to draw first of all to think constructively so how to look around the world and see it as being made up of very basic sort of shapes and then he breaks down various approaches to seeing and thinking about the human body all right so that is a pretty a pretty funky looking seven heads tall female. I think I usually do my women at six heads. So let's do six heads. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to change all my proportions. The more heads tall you draw them, that, so you could draw a five foot tall person at seven heads tall. It's just, you're just changing the size of the head. Um, Real humans are typically built around six heads or shorter. There are some exceptionally tall people who are built more like seven. Seven is typically considered superhero proportions, but Disney princesses and character des characters designed by, you know, Disney Studios, they do tend to be seven heads tall just in terms of their proportions. Six heads tall tends to feel a little uh, squatter. midpoint so if I had expanded these heads I could have made the character I'm about to draw the same height as this one here but it would be it would feel slightly different because the how I'm allocating proportions would be different and I really recommend you draw you practice doing this from life, from reference, to draw people of all ethnicities and body sizes because these sort of things, it's a sliding scale. Everyone's built a little bit differently. So like when we do a six heads tall person, even if we had done larger heads, her legs would still be shorter than her legs. So typically a pretty good rule of thumb, and this is just a generalization, it's not, you know, a specific, is I will typically draw my men seven to eight ten tall, but tall, heads tall, but usually more like seven. Women six heads tall, but that also varies. And then kids and below, that's when the proportions start sliding. So that was for more detailed figures, more realistic figures. If you want to draw cartoony stuff, chibi stuff, a lot of this stuff still applies. It's still thinking about the human body in a reproducible way. So I have videos here on my channel where I show people how to draw detailed chibis. I'll do a few demonstrations for you guys. Today we're gonna start though with just kind of the basic default body. So we have here just a rectangle. I'm gonna try, actually I'll start sketching this out and then I'll do different views of it. 
So that's the head. When we do cartoony chibi stuff, heads are usually much bigger. Proportions are usually um, kind of adjusted more towards cute. So we have the basic skeletal view right here. So that would be the side view. And then the back is going to look at this stage very similar to the front. Okay, so we have skeletal views for three different faces, front, side, and back. I'm gonna switch over now to my darker blue marker and start developing these a little bit more. So what I just drew is typically called a crosshair and that allows me to center everything appropriately on the face. And then I will usually sketch in a middle eye because the eyes are one distance apart from one another. Then we have the rib cage. The pelvic bones. And then I usually use cylinders to help develop the arms and the legs to help flush them out. And cylinders, in case you guys aren't familiar, it's like a soup can or a can of soda, like that. Except when I'm doing arms and legs, I will typically taper them and add a little bit of dynamism to them, even at this stage. Now for the side, I rotate everything a little bit. And then we're also going to see the side of the head. And in a few minutes, I'll do a basic facial construction demonstration for you guys as well. But I have my midline here, so I draw half of the eye, and then I draw the eye I'm actually going to draw. And 
and then from the back we still have that egg shape we can see the pelvis again but this is going to be the back side view And then we're also going to see kind of the sides of the eyes. So next, I'm going to do kind of just a basic demonstration on clothing a figure with those proportions. Actually, I'll do a demonstration of um, a chibi figure on one side and a detailed normal uh, figure on the other. And I'll use the main character from my comic, 7-inch carrot, just because I am super familiar with drawing her. So usually, when I draw, I usually just start by sketching. Just getting an idea out on the paper. I don't really worry too much about the skeletal form until I'm trying to clean things up. So Kara is an 11-year-old little girl. So her figure is still pretty boxy. And the skeleton is kind of a great opportunity to figure out what pose you're going to do. In fact, her legs are way too long. It's also an opportunity to figure out your proportions. Before you get really, um, before you get really committed, before you've put too much time into anything. That's one of the beauties of doing the skeletal form first. And then we'll do the chibi one. And I'm just going to use the same pose because why not? And I'm not even being particularly careful about proportions or anything like that. I just want to demonstrate for you guys. Okay, so they're almost the same height, but you guys can really see this would be like four heads tall and this is more like five. You can really see how changing the head ratio or the head height on the figure can make a real difference in how the character's proportions come across. And I actually made the mistake of drawing with my darker marker. Repetition is a huge part of learning, and the second time you draw things, they often turn out much better than the first. So this time, using the correct color, I'm going to redraw everything. I've already put my line of action in. That was something I'd neglected to do, forgotten to do the first time. And since I already know the pose I'm doing, I can make it a little more dynamic, a little more fun this time. So we've got our basic figure again. Let's do the chibi version now.
So you notice I am keeping a lot of elements consistent between the two. I'm just changing the scale. And normally I would be sketching this in non-photo blue pencil. So if I made mistakes, it would be erasable, but that does not like to show up on camera. So, okay, so we've got our basic figures both sketched in. They're pretty similar. Let's see how things change as I start developing the figures. And in this demonstration, I am also going to show you how to close both of these styles of figures. And you also are probably noticing that in between the two stages, I do change a few things. And that's just because, you know, we're figuring things out, we're developing things, getting a feel for how we want the finished thing to look. For me, the more stages I have, the more I can think, the more I can change things, the more I can refine things, the better the end product can look. So for the chibi figure, I'm going to draw everything a little bit wider. I'm going to change the proportion, the proportions a little bit because when I draw in a chibi style, I want everything to look as cute as possible. So you can see the proportions, they're almost the same height. This one's a little taller than this one, um, but the proportions are really quite different between the two so far. So you guys are going to hate me. I'm gonna draw it a third time. This time though, I'm gonna clothe the figures and refine the details. I'm kind of preparing this sketch pad for my demonstration tomorrow, so I do want everything to kind of make sequential, logical sense to my students. It's okay because repetition helps us improve. The more you draw something, the more you analyze it, the more you think about how you're going about drawing it, the better you're going to get at it. And that leg is too far over. Now normally, if I was in my home studio, I'd just slap a piece of tracing paper on top of this or do it digitally in layers. You can definitely do it that way. You don't have to redraw everything three or four times the way I'm doing. Actually, that's not gonna leave me room for the head. I would also recommend you not sketch in marker in water-based markers in a humid climate on paper because it starts to tear up the paper if you do too many layers. Now 
Now this one is a little bit funky compared to the last one. I apologize for that. I'm going to try and fix it when we're doing the constructive anatomy. Again, if I hadn't done this in marker, if I'd done it in pencil, I would just erase it and redraw it for you guys. But art is also all about learning how to be flexible. So we're going to roll with it. All right, so we start with the spheres for the head. Then we do the crosshairs to divide our head up. We bring the face down on a more detailed figure. It's going to be longer on a chibi figure. You can do this cute cartoony kind of peanut bump thing. Let me show you guys. So that's the head. And then you just bring it down like that. Peanut bump. cylinder for the neck on a chibi style you can do kind of like a squat little tuna can rather than like a can of cola cylinders for the arms Start flushing the hand out just a little bit. And it really helps as you're drawing to sort of think of analogies that help you remember how to draw individual things. So like we call the rib cage an egg, for example, or the pelvis, I called it like the axle on a truck. Just little things that help you remember where things go, little landmarks. And that's going to help you remember what I'm showing you a lot better if you find your own associations. So when you're drawing a human figure, male, female, non-binary, kids, it doesn't matter. You do want to have some cur curves, some, um, so rather than like sausage arms like that, you want your curves to be kind of spaced out so that there's better fluid and better movement. They don't need to be moving in the same direction all at the same time. Okay, so we have our constructed figure sketch here for the more detailed figure. Now we're going to do the same thing over here for the cartoony chibi version. And I just accentuate things a lot more in this format when I'm drawing in this style. And if you're wondering how this, how you can apply this to cartoon characters, like say you want to draw something in the Steven Universe style, reply in the comments below with an art style you'd like to see me break down for you guys, and I would be happy to do so. I love doing those sort of things, and I want to know what you guys want to see. So we've got our little triangle wedge feet. And I always kind of think of the open hand kind of like a catcher's mitt or like home plate because it is shaped. The palm of your hand is shaped like home plate. And then you have your thumb and you have your four fingers coming off. So, all right, we have our constructed figures now. It's time to flesh these out. I'm going to switch over to red and... We're going to start by constructing her face. So I have the three eyes I mentioned, and that goes kind of in the middle of the face. Then halfway down between the eyes and the bottom of the chin is her nose, and then her mouth. I'll draw her smiling. And then from... Her eyebrows to her ears, you can do the nose. And that can be a matter of style, just how, I mean the ears. From 
the eyebrows to the nose, you can do the ear. That can be a matter of personal style, kind of how you adjust these things, how you adjust the proportions. And I think I will not draw her hair yet. So we're gonna do the same thing over here on the chibi one, the cartoony one. So for me, I draw the eyes bigger, but I actually have a tutorial that shows several different ways to draw cute chibi figures, and not all of them have the big old eyes. And then we drew. So I do around the eyes, I do these sort of circles to kind of help me mark where the eyebrow is gonna be. And then for this style, I tend to go with nice, cute, round ears. Then we're gonna switch back over here. We're gonna tighten up the hands. So I even do kind of a skeletal thing for the hands to begin with. And then I flesh out the fingers a little bit more. And it's totally okay to reference your own hands, to take photos of your own hands, or to use other people's hands as reference. Using reference makes you a stronger artist, not a weaker artist. So don't be ashamed to look up what you don't know or to double check what you think you do know. And then for the cartoonier style, I do a lot of the things very similarly, but I make the fingers kind of fatter at the tips and then taper as they meet the hand. I just think that looks a little bit cuter. Now I'm going to start tightening up my details. I'm going to use this black marker here. And you can do whatever level of detail you're personally comfortable with. If you're doing comics, keep in mind that you are going to have to kind of keep up that level of detail for the most part so that your style remains consistent. So it might be better to start with something a little simpler, something you're a little more confident in. And normally I would have sketched all of this out with my non-photo blue pencil first. So I would just be literally inking with the black ink. But I think having the different layers of um, color kind of helps others see what's going on. So, But for my own comics, my own art, which you guys can check out videos of how I do that here on the channel, I would usually uh, stick with mostly one shade of blue do all my details and then uh, ink it with black. That's gonna become really apparent when I start doing the clothes and the clothes look funky. And you're probably noticing I am trying to draw the clothes just sort of outside or on top of the constructive lines. And that's because, you know, clothes sit on top of your body. Nobody or very few people wear actually skin tight clothing. And I also try to draw like seams and wrinkles into clothing as I go.
And even within these drawings, there's plenty of little errors. I noticed them. They may not be noticeable to you. Um, and that, that's okay. Rolling with the punches. Maybe they're glaringly obvious to you. That's great. That means you've got a little bit more discernment. But in the end, it doesn't matter. What matters is the finished pieces. What's matter, what matters is getting the work done, practicing the work, conveying the idea. When you're a comic artist, that's really what matters the most, is conveying the ideas and telling the story. I don't even care if something looks perfect. I care if it looks good. So on the chibi figure for this style, it's going to be pretty similar. in terms of how I draw the eyes. And since I have kind of a cartoony style, I typically draw the hair kind of blocky and in masses rather than like individual strands hair by hair. I feel like that level of detail would really bog down um, just kind of the way I draw and the dynamism of what I'm trying to do. Ooh, this one's really going to be funky. All right, that's okay though. And we're giving them the same outfit because it's just a demonstration of how things change based on proportions. And I'm going to include resources in the links below where you can find the Glenville Poo drawing manual, where you can find Andrew Loomis's figure drawing for all it's worth. If your library doesn't have it, don't hesitate to put in a request and ask them to get it. They are really good drawing resources. It's time for me actually to revisit them. I think even if you're an established artist, they're such wonderful resources. I think it's great to revisit them every few years. So it's going to be about time for me to revisit them. I actually own copies of Figure Drawing for All It's Worth and the Glenville Blue Drawing Manual because I love them so much and I want to be able to mark them up and make my own notes. So, But you can check them out at your local library and if your library doesn't have it, please fill out a request and that way other people can benefit from that knowledge as well. Now my hand is kind of picking up this very wet marker and it's causing it to smear. Okay, so we have our two figures drawn side by side. I think you guys can probably tell the difference between the two. I think that's pretty apparent. Um, and that really illustrates the differences between um, the, di the sort of different head size options you can do will really change the proportions of how you draw. Now I want to do a head drawing tutorial with you guys. I do have others on this channel and if there's something you need to see me do multiple times, please do let me know in the description. I mean in the comments. I'm happy to help. So heads one of the most important things to know how to draw. There's a bunch of different ways to draw heads and faces. I am not claiming mine is the correct one. I am saying it is the right one for me. So it is important that you find the right method for you. So we're, I always start with a sphere. And I'm going to do, let's see, um, front three quarter, because everybody loves three quarter, right? And then side. And they're all basically the same size. And this one, so 
when you draw a head, head is a sphere, right? But, so we're gonna start with the first one. But it's not a perfect sphere. Your head is longer usually than a sphere when you're a baby. It does look very spherical, it looks very round. As you get older, your face does tend to get longer. So what I think about when I'm thinking, when I'm drawing heads is I think about the sphere and then the shovel. With the shovel, because like if you guys have seen a shovel, right? A shovel looks like this, right? It has this part here. Well, this part is the part that comes down from the front of your face. So this long part is the shovel in front of the sphere. Then we divide the sphere the sphere itself in half horizontally, in half vertically, and we go ahead and we place an eye in the middle. Because your face is typically five eye widths wide. Now, depending on the style you do, you may draw them closer together, you may draw them farther apart, you may draw them so large that you don't have a full eye width on either side of the head. For the purposes of this particular demonstration, we're going to probably have a half an eye on either side. And then halfway down, we're going to make a mark for the nose, a mark for the lips, mark for the chin. Then I will divide the sphere again, so that's going to end up being the hairline, and then I will draw larger circles around the eyes. They're kind of ovals around the eyes and that, like I said earlier, helps me place the eyebrows. So I'm gonna do that with all three views. Now, on the three quarter length view, we have our crosshairs. We have our shovel. It's not a perfect sphere though. It's a sphere that someone has taken a slice off the sides. So we bring our shovel down and then we draw our crosshairs on the slice and then connect our shovel to the bottom of the crosshair. Draw our middle eye, our eyes on either side, our nose, our mouth. Mark where the eyebrows are going to go, then divide that again for the hairline. So that's the three quarters view. Now we're gonna do the profile view. And this is in kind of a cartoony style, so obviously the proportions are not realistic proportions. You can adjust them as necessary, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we're gonna go with the style I'm most comfortable in, which is a cartoony style. So we can see the slice fully now. Draw the crosshairs. Draw the shovel and it comes down from the slice. Draw the middle eye and this is kind of like a half view because we're viewing it from the side. the hairline, the nose, the mouth. So we've got our three basic views. This is in sort of a constructed, broken down view. Now I'm gonna do it all over again. Can only get better, right? So we're gonna draw our three spheres our crosshairs and our slices and the more you do this the better you're gonna get now I learned how to do this in Paul Hudson's constructive human anatomy class and I have notes and more detailed instructions for those of you who are a little more advanced than this but I also recommend you read Bern Hogarth's constructive figure anatomy book and I'll link that in the description below because he also takes this approach for figure drawing And this, again, is what works for me. It doesn't have to work for you. It doesn't necessarily work for everyone. It's all about finding a method 
that works for you. So I've got the basics for my three heads. I need to do my shovel on this one. And this is actually a very simplified version of what was taught in Paul Hudson's class. So my notes are probably more, much more detailed than that, this. Now I'm gonna start constructing it a little bit more. Mark in where the chin's gonna go and the hairline. All right, then I'm gonna draw in, so usually when I think about noses, I think about triangles, and noses can come in a lot of different shapes, but most of them are variations on a triangle. It can be like this, with this part being the bridge of the nose. It can be like this, so it's more like a diamond. It can even be very soft and rounded like that right there. Again, when you're drawing from reference, try to translate it into your style. Figure out how someone's nose in a photo would look in your style. So for this, we're gonna give this person kind of a longer nose and I'm gonna go ahead and sketch those in. as well as the ears, which should come from usually the top of the eyebrows to the bottom of the nose. Depending on your art style, that might change, and it's okay when you're doing the sketches to kind of use guidelines. Nothing wrong with guidelines. So we've got our basics sketched in again. Now I'm going to start refining. I'm gonna do that in red so it'll stand out. Top of the eyelid, bottom of the eyelid. eyelid. And there are loads of ways to draw eyes. Let's draw big eyes for this, because why not? The irises loads of ways to draw eyebrows, lots of different types of eyebrows. Not everybody has the same eyebrows, so I recommend you use reference. ears aren't quite big enough in this view, so I will tighten them up a little bit, make them a little longer. And that's why we do things in stages. Every stage presents an opportunity to refine things, to change how you're approaching what you're drawing. Another thing, I didn't do it, but I wanna extend the middle line because you're gonna line up, especially in the three quarters view, you're gonna line up kind of the middle of the lips on that middle line. So it's helpful to know. Bottom of the chin eyebrows It's 
kind of a mess. And then the neck kind of comes in off from the side. And then finally, the profile view. covered sort of the basics of facial construction as well as figure drawing. Again, please check the description below for a more in-depth breakdown, a more in-depth explanation of how, um, of resources for finding figure drawing information, finding human constructive anatomy information, um, Check the description below for outside links and further demonstrations. If you have any questions, if you'd like to see anything done more in depth, let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to see how I would handle different cartoon characters, breaking them down, figuring out how they're put together, let me know that as well. And I would be happy to comply, happy to do that for you guys. So I hope you guys have a great day. I hope I see you again really soon. And make sure you check out some of my other drawing tutorial videos here on this channel. I'm Becca Hilburn. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye guys! So I took the time to redo some of the illustrations for the demonstration tomorrow just because I wasn't 100% pleased with how they turned out. And I wanted to use them as sort of visual cues, visual reminders. I plan on doing live demonstrations as well. But it's nice to have kind of corrected, pre-done drawings to sort of help demonstrate some of my ideas better. And I may add more as I think of it, but I think this is a pretty good start. So these are for a workshop I am presenting tomorrow. Um, it will not be tomorrow for you guys. It will have already aired by the time you guys get to see this video. But I am presenting a online live stream workshop to a group of comics uh, camp, comics campers. So um, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be my first time doing a workshop like that in that manner. I hope it goes really well and I hope they're able to learn a lot. And I hope you guys were able to learn a lot from this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm always eager to hear back from you guys. And if you'd like to see anything demonstrated again in depth or in detail, let me know as well. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you'll check out those books I recommended, and I hope you'll check out the description below for links so you can find everything. I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye guys!